So what do I mean by the cross-correlation method? In signal processing, cross-correlation is a measure of similarity of two different waveforms as a function of the time lag applied to one of them. What that basically means is that I have two different signals, two different waveforms, and I want to combine them to figure out what are the best ways that I can correlate the two different signals together and allow me to kind of do things of measuring the similarity between those signals. We were looking at that for a variety of reasons when we get into feature detection and stuff in the later lectures, but this is an important part of what we want to actually look at a little bit more carefully now, and then actually we'll use that to develop other concepts. Another way of looking at the cross-correlation is also considering it as a sliding dot product or an inner product of two different signals. And you witness this when we actually look at a smaller kernel and we slid it over a bigger image and actually compute it at the center or at a representative point, the output which was the combination or an inner dot product of those two signals. And that's an important part on how the process unfolded as we looked at how we did the processing or filtering in the last lecture. Mathematical notation of cross-correlation is shown here. Again, we are using the two summations and looping over the whole image here uh, with a non-uniform attribute weights. Mathematically, we will denote this by symbol here, where basically the kernel H is being cross-correlated with the uh, out input signal F to generate an output G. So what do we mean when we say now we are filtering an image? What we mean by filtering an image here is what we're doing is replacing each pixel in the output with a linear combination of its neighbors with a kernel matrix. And for each one of them, there is a kernel or a mask uh, signal, H, here. And basically, that is a prescription, a function of weights, which is applied as a linear combination to generate an output G. And we saw this as I rubbed over again H over the input image F to generate the output G earlier.